Okay, so we've just come out of this meeting and it was absolutely fascinating. Um, obviously, the announcements went out a few days ago, but NVIDIA has revealed DLSS 3.5. Um, with re reconstruction. Yeah. And re -reconstruction. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one because you kind of see, need to see it in action. You need to see the videos um, to appreciate what it's doing, but it is essentially AI driven denoising. But it's not, you know, it's not, when you, when you think denoising, you think denoising, removing of noise from yeah. an image. But what we're actually seeing here is something which takes. DLSS uh, path tracing games uh, probably going to gain the most, but you know basically image quality is taken to the next level. Yeah, it's it's all and about visual quality too. Not yeah, just the image quality. It's not just yeah, it's yeah. not just edges or something like that. It's literally yeah. like the lighting now looks more complete. The reflections now look more complete. The shadows now uh, attenuate correctly. They're not over blurred or under blurred. And oh my god, it did. It was. All right, so it was actually really impressive <laughs> yeah. um, because if you've played a game like a path trace game or even a ray trace game before, let me give you an example of control. And I talked about it a couple times in the control videos I've done where if you use DLSS in that game and you have ray trace, like let's just say reflections on, uh, you can notice when you turn on DLSS, like the quality of ray trace reflections goes down. They look lower yep. res than the rest of the image. And then, of course, oops, I'm knocking over stuff here. Uh, and then, of course, um, there's other aspects of the image quality which are less than great because you're working with such a low sample per pixel amount in general. You see things like blurring. You see things like ghosting when an object moves. Or the surface of an object may have a lot of its detail eradicated because yep. the signal is trying to be smoothed over. It's it caught in the noise reduction. Yeah, right, exactly. And it's just understandable, caught in the noise reduction, stuff goes away. And this looks to like solve all of those problems that I just mentioned while doing DLSS. And so we saw images of things like, out, like I think in Alan Wake, where we saw it there, as well as in Cyberpunk. In Cyberpunk, like they would turn it on and off and it would be like, that image looks a lot higher res than the other one. And there's so many more extra material and yeah. reflection and lighting detail that wasn't there without this denoising. I mean, the most obvious place was in like there are lots of neon signs in these games, right? Where you have like text written in the sign reflects in the puddle, right? With a regular denoiser, you could still kind of make it out. It was blurrier, but you could read it. But as soon as you start to move the camera, it just smears. And then when you stop again, it takes a few seconds for the denoising to settle yeah. and basically coalesce into the image. With this new solution, it's basically instant. And even moving back and forth, moving the camera wherever, the reflection stays crystal clear. And this is it's even more impressive on more diffuse surfaces where you have normally it's when you have these noisy, leggy yeah. looking reflections. Like it was cool that they were there for sure. It looks amazing, but it's delayed. Like you move it, the reflection updates behind, it leaves a lot of streaks and trails. And now that's just gone. Yeah, and another example from Alan Wake where this is a big issue with the fuse lighting in games. We talked about it in Minecraft RTX when John mm -hmm. and I looked at it. You turn off a light and the secondary lighting or even primary lighting because it's a path trace right. will fade in and out. Like you'll see it like fade over time in the image. And this was like light out, yep, it's, it's all gone. Should. Light on, comes back on. Which is, this is a, such a huge problem in real-time ray tracing. Like, I know. I mentioned this, that's why I mentioned it at the place was that cyberpunk example where yeah. when you're playing the path trace version, you jump in a car, you know, you're outside, bright and sunny, hop in the car, it's dark in the dashboard. You almost see these like spots. It makes it look like a horror game almost. Like, yeah. It's actually weird looking. I don't like it, but it actually takes at least five seconds or more before it starts to settle. But now, like, we didn't see that exact example, but that's what the out of the way thing with, that actually yeah. is the same type of thing where the light's on, then it's off. And you just get instant uh, image yeah, without instant. any of those, like, fading artifacts. Yeah, so this, this actually has a lot of uh, ramifications uh, and something... Like when these tech this tech comes out, I'm gonna probably cover it in Alan Wake and in Cyberpunk to some degree, but there's a lot of interesting ramifications here because it is it's replacing in a in a game with a lot of ray tracing effects, it could be replacing upwards of four denoisers. Like there's ones that are handling shadows, there's ones that are happening diffuse, one specular. There could be a different one for sun shadows and things like that. There's a lot of things that it could be replacing. And 
and it's doing them all. Like the one, the, the denoiser we were seeing it against was against NRD, which is the like top tier NVIDIA denoiser yeah, that's yeah. used in a lot of games. And it's like state of the art. And it's replacing all those, producing a better quality. And the funny thing is, at least in these path traced examples that we saw, it's also running better. The game's yeah. running better while looking significantly better. Like yeah. significantly Although better. they didn't want to like really <laughs> yeah. focus on performance, it's like it won't run worse and it actually often runs better. Yeah. And that's all that's even in an almost unfair comparison, right? When yeah, you're talking about NRD, they're like, well, we're doing that at like quarter res versus the full res for you know DLSS, DLSS 3.5. Yeah. But if you actually did NRD at full res, it'd be a lot slower, right? Yeah, I think so. the thing that amused me uh, was uh, Alex was uh, insistent on checking that it was actually running DLSS performance mode for the mm -hmm. spatial upscale because, you know, previously it would be using ray traced effects from a much lower resolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of looking 4K-ish to me on the, really, on the Resolve. Yeah. It didn't, like, yeah, it so, didn't have yeah, the, any of the issues. The denoiser is integrated into the superscaler, right? So it it's all one process. It's all happening one time, and the image that's being fed into it is the 4K image let, at the end of the day. Watch, so. Watching you do that there, Alex, yeah. that's my favorite thing in the demo, because like he's like, yeah, let me just check if this is... Uh, and you're like, no, just go over there. So <laughs> that, okay, so, so which one? He's like, no, no. You're like almost grabbing his mouse and like bumping him over. Like, no, 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 no. And it's like, I just need to see this. And, and I'm just saying, I didn't there, believe like, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, and the other thing we saw, we saw Cyberpunk was... We saw, uh, Forgotten Liberty? Yeah, yeah, this? yeah, Phantom, 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 Phantom Liberty. Liberty. Phantom, Phantom Liberty, Phantom, yeah. The Phantom Pain? Phantom Not the Phantom, Phantom Pain. Pain. Forgotten Pain? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, and then we also saw Alan Wake. We saw... Um, uh, yeah, we saw Alan Wake survive. <laughs> Alan Wake was high. Which was very... Uh, yeah, that game is actually, incredible. Honestly, you way. saw more of a demo than I, I did. I saw more of a demo. Even that, that's some of the best looking visuals, period, that I've ever seen. Like, it actually starts to look like real CGI with it's, path tracing. Yeah, the path tracing. And they, the denoising. Like, it's just like, my God. They toggle, it, toggle it on and off. The path tracing. There's a lot to say about that. But then, you know. They also, for the first time, we did catch a glimpse of the game running without any ray tracing, right? And yeah. Like SSR. And it still looks good. It still looks good. But the difference was, it was really gigantic. Big mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be said about that like game. Amazing. They pressed the yeah. next gen button. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was literally like advancing a generation with an entire click of a button. It was pretty cool. And of course, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk looks amazing. We also saw it in Portal RTX. Yeah. 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 Which was actually showed more egregious examples of, um, you know, shimmering and. Mm -hmm. That of surface course, detail destruction. Surface, surface detail destruction. At least is phenomenal in there. It's what you missed though, Rich, is they took us back in to see the Half Life Two. Yeah, right. so okay, yeah. yeah. That, right? We saw and Half Life Two. Hour obviously, text. still work in progress, and they're like, you know, there's working with modders and trying to recreate all the assets. But the quality of the assets, of course, excellent. But yeah. also, just like the quality of the path tracing. Like one of the one of my favorite examples as he showed us was like, you remember the magnifying glass on the table yeah. in the lab? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, normally that was like an effect that Valve created, very specific to create this, right? Yeah. But instead here, they just specified like a lens glass material, and then the, the path tracer just handled it. So you both have like the magnification and distortion through it, but also the reflections off the table. I know. At the same time, you're just like, what's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, having glass actually work more like real glass in a game, it's been so faked for so long, and yeah. some games do it way better than others, I would definitely say, but like, these are things that were just... I think they were really happy. I think modders were chomping at the bit to be able to have technology that allows them to just express themselves in a way like they did. And they also showed me right there, I think you might have missed that part, John, because you maybe turned around or you're talking with Phil. Right. Um, but they showed me the RTX Remix toolkit. No, briefly. I saw that too. You did see that too. That's the first yeah. time I've seen that. That's yeah, the first that time looked, we saw that, that too. Amazing. And that looked like just dragging and dropping and Yeah, they're just like cycling replacing. through assets and like swapping in models and just like yeah, it, it, it looks, looks very, very powerful, omniverse-based uh, kind of thing. So, yeah, and then uh, after we we did, uh, I mean, DLSS 3.5, incredibly impressive. There's a lot to be said about it beyond this. Uh, then we also sat down and talked with Remedy about uh, Alan Wake 2. Which there's, there's a lot to we be said probably, about that. Yeah, I don't know if we oh have time gosh. to go into all of that. But before that, though, I did want to mention the first thing we did with NVIDIA. You remember that the challenge? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, which <laughs> I think funny. that that ended up being pretty funny. So basically, what they did is they had two PCs, two towers, 
two of the same monitor and they had Fortnite running and they were like, uh, all right, guys, Alex, you sit down here, John, you sit down here, and then we're going to switch stations. And one of them was using GeForce Now at 240 frames per second, 240 hertz. The other was native PC, right? And they're like, can you figure out which one is streaming and which one's native? Mm-hmm. And yeah. well, unfortunately for them, <laughs> we figured it out in like two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And then another guy came along and said, did they, did they see the difference? And the guy went, yeah, they saw it immediately. <laughs> but, but, to but, be fair, but, but to be very fair, it is that cool. was like the highest quality streaming I've ever seen. Like it was really like GeForce Now is already great, but seeing it at 240 frames per second, uh, the responsiveness and clarity. It, it, it genuinely did look good, and that comes from someone that hates the cloud. Yeah, yeah. like it, that frame rate. But I'm a, no, I'm okay with cloud streaming in, in this context. Like services that like lock onto your like Steam library or Xbox Game Pass, as they're doing right, and allows you to play games you already own on your high end PC uh, via other means. I think that's awesome. It was the Stadia idea I didn't like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take some supporter questions on all of this. This one from Marcus A. Hi, DF team. Is the new re reconstruction feature of DLSS 3.5 related to NVIDIA's Neural Radiance Cache technology oh. that was detailed in 2021? Mm. Also somewhat related, if you were to posit a guess, what new feature or technology would constitute a DL DLSS 4.0 major revision? We're getting path-traced Half-Life 2! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Alex, what is NVIDIA's Neural Radio Radiance Caching? You do uh, does it relate to DLSS 3.5? I suspect the answer is no. It doesn't actually. I asked about this. Yeah, John Phil talked about that. Phil talked about it. And NRC is working from the other end of the problem. Uh, uh, DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction is saying, okay, we're doing upscaling and we're also doing denoising at the same time. This is after all the rays have already been shot and they're there. And so it's denoising the image. Uh, uh, neural radiance cache is actually about feeding in more rays into the image really? that are generating. Including Ray Charles? <laughs> yes, yes. All the rays. I don't know if you would see this, but <laughs> <laughs> but either way, so it's about feeding more rays into the image before denoising even occurs, so you have less issues, so you have less denoising that is required to have like a more cohesive image. And the rays generated in there are like a feedback loop with the renderer. Uh, that says, like, actually, we're reconstructing the paths of this year, which would otherwise uh, be either too performance intensive or they wouldn't produce cohesive images. So it's like feeding right, right. in extra rays that are AI driven, but they're based on real data from the feedback loop there. And that actually has another interesting aspect where NRC could potentially also reduce the amount of rays required to do more complex effects because it's right, generating right. them much like DLSS is, and you'd have. At that point, you'd have, at the end of the equation, post-processing, doing things with AI, and even the image generation itself would be AI at that point. So it'd be like, they can be combined in some, some, some sort of way in the future, I imagine, but right now there was no discussion about what products would be using neural radiance Where cache. do they go next for DLSS? Neural radiance cache. Neural radiance cache. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, would be, it, would be, it would be at the different part of the pipeline at that point. And I don't know. I don't know if they'd even call it DLSS at that point because it's not the Actually, same thing. I don't know. Back to DLSS 3 real quick at 3.5. Uh, one thing we didn't mention on the image quality is the foliage rendering. Oh, God. Because, wow. uh, so they showed us an example in Cyberpunk where, like, you know, foliage uh, at night trying to be denoised was just, it turned into a kind of a blotchy mess. And I noticed this as well, and I, you know, we kind of accepted some of these inconsistencies because path tracing is hard, right? Uh, but this, when they enabled the new denoiser, you're just like, it looks perfect. Like, yeah. all the foliage is, is fine now. And this is actually going to be really key. We didn't see this section of it, but Alan Wake 2, of course, lots of forests, lots of foliage. That's the kind of stuff that would have, would kind of break without yes. something like this. And I'll be curious to see what ray tracing looks like in this game on non-NVIDIA cards that don't support this? Yeah, uh, it's going to be very interesting. To see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, so it's interesting that, you know, FSR 3 really does uh, make a huge stride in catching up with the latest NVIDIA in in innovation, but this DLSS denoising is, well, just look at the videos. It's, it's, it's really impressive. Uh, final support question from um, Martin Putters. 
Martin Peters. Uh, and then video <laughs> video yeah. description revealed that Alan Wake 2 will launch with full path tracing support. Uh, path tracing support was only done so far on games running on in-house tech. Red, en- Red Engine, Quake 2, Northlight and RTX Remix. Are the out-of-the-box out Unreal Engine 4 slash 5 RT implementations maybe just not optimized to CPU limited maybe enough hmm. enough to hmm. allow for full path tracing currently. Well, you, before you guys chime in, Unreal Engine has got a path tracer, right? And, yeah. um, you know, for NVIDIA to make this take off, for NVIDIA to make this become the next level and an established standard, it's got to be supported by Unreal Engine 5, surely. Yeah, and they, <laughs> yeah. They, they have, so that they've got their internal uh, path tracer in Unreal, but it doesn't have like, um, it's not like tuned right now at the moment to be like real time so much so. Uh, and NVIDIA on the side offers an RTX DI branch of UE5 where primary lighting is done through RTX DI uh, and then obviously nanite geometry is rasterized, sure, yeah, yeah. etc. And then Lumen's doing the indirect lighting as far as I understand. So that is similar to what you see in things like um, in, uh, well, it's not, it's, it's not the exact same actually. So it is similar. You get qualities that are similar to it, but I don't. I actually don't know what's going to be going on with UE5 because it feels like that would be a natural evolution of where they're going there to like make that path tracing real time, perhaps with the help of NVIDIA, because NVIDIA is the one doing it on PC, and that's where you would use path tracing anyway. Um, but at the moment, it's hard to say. I, I would love for it to be that way, but right now it seems to be about custom engines. We'll see. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, UE5's path tracer is probably more for the offline side. Yeah, things, right? absolutely. Which they yeah. do a lot of these days, so that makes sense to be there. But it's yeah. not really designed for real time gaming. But if we think about this strategically, it if, if it's if it's going to gain momentum, it needs to be it an needs Unreal. Needs to be an Unreal. Yeah, that's it. I, I would like to see that. That's mm. yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, there's, is there anything to stop Nvidia doing it themselves? Because they've got their own branch of Unreal Engine, right? Yeah, I mean, like like I was saying, RTX DI is in U, UE5, and this kind of gives it that look. But it's still not doing things like the multiple specular bounce, etc. Right. Right. It's not doing those aspects of the things that we see in. Uh, and even if they did it themselves, like the whole idea is like Unreal Engine's used by companies making multi-platform games. Right. They're not going to branch off just for NVIDIA cards, right? Uh, One thing that did come up in conversation, I asked whether the denoising could be used on non-path trace titles. And they seem to express the preference for Alan Wake 2 uh, specifically that they would rather reduce the ray bounce count to basically enable more hardware to be able to get path tracing, which I guess also serves NVIDIA's interests. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but um, the bottom line is that we've seen that scalability with the with the mod for Cyberpunk 2077, which we right. showed in the 4060 review. 4060 doing path trace Cyberpunk. And that is kind of like a democratization of that technology that we kind of need to see because it can't be a 4090, 4080 only style solution. It's no, got no. to scale. And ray bounce count seems to be the way to um, scale it, yeah. it quite Keep effectively. It, yeah, and or it was, we, it was like one. <laughs> yeah, one. I mean, there's obviously issues that can occur with that, but yeah, I'm also yeah. very curious to see. We only saw like DLSS performance mode, but what about like performance mode on like a 3060, or what about ultra performance mode mm-hmm. in a PT game? Like this new denoiser had really dramatic impacts on image quality. And a, Actually, you know, come to think of it, they did say that the denoiser works on older cards, right? And, yeah, and Turing the to Ampere and, and path tracing is so heavy that it kind of requires frame gen. So, right, yeah. So, so yeah. 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 It, you could get great 30 FPS now, which is better image quality. So yeah, maybe that's what I guess about. that's what they're talking about, yeah. Interesting right. stuff. That was another great demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm.